Attention Walmart shoppers, heirloom seeds now available in the garden center. Now nah, this isn't a commercial for Walmart. I do happen to walk through the garden center from time to time just to get, get tomato cages or trellis, you know, the trellis netting, stuff like that. I was in there the other day and I noticed they had heirloom seeds. Now that maybe they carried them for a while, but it's the first time I've seen them at Walmart. Uh, they had beefsteak tomatoes, all kinds of veggies, sugar peas. They even had some flowers like snapdragons. And of course, the great thing about heirloom seeds is that at the end of the season, you can save those seeds, replant them the next year, and know what you're going to get. If you use hybrid seeds and try to reuse them the next year, there's no telling what you get if you get anything. So. If you're looking for heirloom seeds and you don't want to have to pay shipping costs or you know find a place online to order them, check out your local garden center. You might be able to find them there. No, I'm not quitting my day job and becoming a weatherman, but earlier this week we had some really severe weather. We're at the end of April 2014. It's the last day of the month, actually, the 30th. And a few days ago, we had really severe storms hit Arkansas, Mayflower, big tornadoes, and all through the Mid-South. And it's thanks to a big low-pressure system that is now bringing really cold weather. We're struggling to get up above 50 degrees today, as a matter of fact. And this thing is just pumping cold air down from the northwest like crazy. Tonight, northwest Arkansas is under the threat of a freeze. We might get some frost or some freezing here. Uh, I think we're going to avoid that, but we've barely gotten out of 50 degrees today. I mean, we're still in the mid-50s, and it's almost 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So let's head out to the garden now, and I'll show you what I'm up to. I'm working on green beans, tomatoes, and getting ready to do some cantaloupe seeds and all that good stuff. So let's go do a garden update. Well, I got germination on the green beans, the bush ones, in about five, six days. I want to say six days it was. And instead of actually putting the trellis netting up against the greenhouse, I'm going to repurpose some, uh, some metal bed frame rails off of a queen bed. And I'm just going to put them right up where they're going to grow so that I don't have to bend them over to make them grow up. Now, if you happen to run over to Wally World looking for those heirloom seeds, over there they've also got trellis netting. It's 5 foot by 15 foot. And uh, that's going to do me real good. I'm going to run one on one side, one on the other, and then like I said, I'm going to put the tomato cages in the center for those bush green beans. I'm just going to knock one in on the first side, get it lined up on all my green beans here. And then I'm going to start the trellis netting. First thing I'm going to have to do is spread it out and <laughs> get it out properly. Right. Now I'm going to take the end of my trellis netting and I'm going to weave it through back and forth on here. At the very top here, I've got some holes and so I'll just tie this bad boy off. I'm also going to tie it off all the way down the side. There's little strings hanging off the side and that way it'll be nice and secure as weight gets applied to this it'll pull on this and it won't just all droop down real bad hopefully now at this point I'm gonna pull it tight so I have a good idea of where I need to have my post and I need to have it right about here all right now I've got a nice good trellis to train those bush green beans up Coming up in the center, I'm just going to pop some cages in here. Boy, I tell you, that low pressure system has brought a ton of clouds and heavy wind today. Uh oh, hey, looky there. Blue sky. Next up on the list of to-dos is pruning my tomatoes and getting my trellis string uh, strung up for them. I'm going to be using trellis clips 
and just garden string. I've got some uh, runner boards, little uh, furring strips running across the bed that I tie off to and then I run the string up to the top of the greenhouse. If you'd like to see more information on exactly how I do that, I'm going to put a link below to a video I did last year on exactly how I do that. Now the other thing that's very important at this point that I'm going to do is I'm going to prune up my indeterminate tomatoes. I'm going to get the lower leaves away from the ground. I'm still going to leave the uh, top bunches on. I'm actually going to prune up until until I either get to uh, oh about six to eight inches off the ground or I get to blooms. If I get to blooms I'm going to stop below that. The other thing you want to make sure of is that your clippers are nice and clean and you might even consider having a little jar of alcohol and dipping them in between each tomato plant. That will prevent disease from transferring from one plant to the other. Pruning these tomatoes up is going to do a couple of things for you though. It's going to keep the leaves clear of the splash zone where rain can fall on the soil and splash up disease on the plant. The other thing that it's going to do is it's going to allow better airflow and when you plant tight like I do, almost a square foot method if you will, and I'm going to single stem them anyway, it allows that airflow to get through and then it helps with pollination and it makes the stem stronger and it allows them to breathe better. So I'm going to do that next. Well, if you remember a few weeks ago when I planted these tomatoes, I put a little bit of triple 13 down in the bottom, put a little compost on top and then I did the plant and you can tell that they've hit it because boy they have just exploded. I've got stems already as big as my pinky. I've got lots of blooms as well. These trellis clips have got a little point right here. This is where the string goes and then it locks onto the string and it leaves a nice open area for the stem of the plant. So I'm just going to take it like so. Try not to tangle it up here. Bring the plant over. It'll have a nice secure guide now and it'll grow right up. And I'll use those all the way up the, the string. Last year I did the same kind of trellising for the pepper plants. This year I'm going to go ahead and use cages. I'm going to set them in the ground. If they continue to grow beyond the cage itself, what I'll do is simply tie off a string and I'll go up to the top of the greenhouse and then I can use the trellis clips to continue them on up if they keep growing that long. Maybe they will. But tomato cages will work just fine for pepper plants and it'll help hold them and keep them upright because when you get those bell peppers on they can get really heavy and they could fall over and break. We don't want that. I want every one of them bad boys. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and seed my heirloom cantaloupe. I've got some light grass growing. I've got weed blocked down so it's really, really thin. So I just need to clear some areas away to get these seeds going. When the cantaloupe take off, they're going to shade it out and kill it. Plus, since it's uh, just growing on top of the weed block, when it starts getting warm, this stuff's going to die out. Well, the sun's come out and I've shucked my jacket. When this wind dies down tonight, we got a chance of a frost. So I'm going to go back to a video I shot last year on 1227 BioWash. It is basically a plant shampoo and botanical wash that is supposed to raise the freezing point of your plants. So I've mixed up a half a jar in my hose-in sprayer. I've also added some antiseptic mouthwash to deal with bugs and just uh, a little bit of Neptune's fish fertilizer as well. Kind of give all the plants a little, uh, a little bite to eat before it happens tonight. So the next thing I'm going to do is plug in and water in my seeds and wash everything down and hope it works. I'm not going to use a frost blanket tonight, so keep her fingers crossed. Now the good thing about using antiseptic mouthwash, the yellow kind in your hose-in sprayer, is that it will give the bugs diarrhea. Explosive diarrhea. Diarrhea so bad they'll want to go somewhere else. Well I've got everything bio washed. Managed to get a lot done today. We got the tomatoes trellised. I got the clips on. I got the 
peppers caged up. We've got our trellis netting up for our green beans and the cages for that. I even managed to plant an eggplant for Mrs. Reaganite she don't know about yet. And I got the cantaloupe planted over there and our old cantaloupe teepee set in place. I'm actually going to have to redo that cantaloupe teepee. We're on year number three with it and she's looking a little weak. <laughs> so stay tuned. I may uh, do a video on how to make one of those in the near future. Until then, this is Reaganite71. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.